On this week's show, Peloton celebrates Black History Month and a drop of new apparel. And we have new boxing classes and an Eminem artist series and much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 67 of Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I'm Amanda Siegel and I'm joined by my co host, John Pruitt. Hey, John. Hey, now. How's it going, Amanda? It's good. It is very good. <laughs> back back good up weekend. and running, literally. Oh, baby. It is a good week <laughs> in the Siegel household. I, um, I have to tell you, it was worth the wait. No question. No ifs, ands, or buts. But yes, folks, I have a working tread. Um, yikes. I got to tell you, it, it, it definitely questioned um, everything that's been going on with Peloton over the last um, couple of weeks. And, um, you know, it did, certainly came to light when, when, I, when I recognized how, you know, how dysfunctional the, the customer service aspect of things are. Um, I will say, though, yeah. the, the supervisor that I had been working with did actually send me a lovely, um, a lovely email this past week. She actually ended up getting COVID, and that was why I didn't Ooh. end up hearing back from her. So I felt awful uh, after I had pestered her a couple times. So um, I'm sorry, Lucinda. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, um, but you know what? I, I will tell you that... You know, while there are aspects of of the company that we all kind of question and, and things just aren't like they were a couple of years ago, the service technicians are pretty awesome. And and I really, really, really want to give a shout out to to them because they clearly don't get nearly enough credit because they're behind the scenes. Um, yeah. but what, you know, the last two sets of, of guys that I had in, um, you know, really took the extra effort to make sure that they were doing what they needed to do. I got to tell you that they were amazing and, um, we managed to, um, get it all sorted and they listened to me and they didn't just, you know, blow me off or, you know, being a, um, a pain standing over them while we were trying to get it all sorted. And, um, they were able to, um, to get it done. So um, my Tread Plus has a new touchscreen, it has new rails, and it has an almost new base. Um, they were able to actually fix the wiring that was the issue um, in the first place. So um, it was it was all good. It was all good. Nice. And um, well, I know how much your yeah. boy I know how much your boyfriend John Hosking missed you in Club <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. He's my boo. Uh, such a sweetheart. But let me tell you, I um, yeah. And and whilst some folks don't want to hear about my milestones, I will tell you <laughs> that I am running <laughs> one hundred runs on on Saturday um, morning. This past Saturday was one hundred runs. That's as much as I'll say. Um, All right. Well, enough say, about couple, you, Amanda. A, a, a couple days early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Enough <laughs> about me. Enough about me. But you know what? We had a lot of very concerned viewers and listeners that were reaching out and were frustrated for me. So I needed to put everybody's mm. minds at ease um, because, John, I'm not quite like you with my, you know, 10 or 15,000 followers on Instagram. I have my little, you know, my little <laughs> posse of, you know, 2,000 something. Um, and those that follow me knew, but those that don't, I'm sharing. How about you, John? How was your week? <laughs> My week was just dandy. Uh, yeah. Workout-wise, uh, Jackie uh, is away this whole weekend uh, in Vegas, so I'm just flying solo with Jackson. So it's just the two of us, just the boys. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of good, lot of good picks of the week. I'm mixing it up. Got some new, some fresh ones for you. I don't like to Good. double dip too much. So yeah, some new ones this week from last week, different, different instructors. So Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, now I figured I also need to, um, you know, diversify a little bit um, and give you guys a little bit more of, of, you know, of the platform. So um, we'll, we'll get, we'll get yeah, to that at the end of the show. You. 
Will I see you on some tread boot camps or is that is that not your bag, baby? No, no, maybe. Now that I have my tread, now that I have my tread up, I need to um, you know, look at it, look at a week in in, you know, in in succession and see what um, what I could do. But yeah, absolutely. I, you know, not to not to give it too much airtime, but I did get a tonal this week and I am um doing some strength training on there, so I got to kind of figure out how to, you know, do it all. Um, but, mm. but yeah, I think, um, tread boot camps, um, are definitely something that could be, um, in the mix. I didn't know you would go over to the, I didn't know you would be seduced by the dark side of tonal. <laughs> you know what? I waited so long for Peloton to come out with something that would be, you know, even remotely, um, adequate. And, um, mm. I can't say much about it yet because I just got it up and running, um, this past week, but, um, you know, it, it just adding it, it. To be honest with you, it really was Mark's thing. It was not mine. He was very, he's uh, more okay. of the strength training. He's not a big cardio person. So this was, he really, this was his was purchase. His, idea. It was his purchase. It was his purchase and gotcha. I'm allowed to use it. So, um, so I'm, I'm happy that I get to do that. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Well, John, we got lots to get through. So um, before we get started with the news, we always like to remind you of how you can keep up to date with all of our content across all of our platforms. Every episode is released on our YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand side of the screen and hit the notify button to make sure that you never miss an episode. And if you just want to listen to us, we are on all traditional podcast platforms. Just search Pillow Buddy TV, click subscribe, hit notifications, so you never miss an episode. And we always love to hear from you and, and read your reviews, especially the positive ones that we love. And so if you uh, want to leave us a review, give us any suggestions or feedback, we always welcome that from you. And you know what, John, we actually did get a, um, a lovely review this past week, and I'll go ahead and read it. It is from Maggie Jessica, and she took a listen to us on Apple Podcasts. She gave us five stars. Um, she said, great information. I just discovered your podcast, and it is so fun and informative. It gets me fired up to get on my bike. Hello from Metro Detroit, Michigan. So ah, she's, she's a- in the day. <laughs> She's in the D. There you go. So nice. um, thanks for taking the time to um, send that. And um, again, you know, we, we love to hear your feedback, as John said. So that was very welcome. So thank you so much, Maggie Jessica. Um, and of course, folks, we are on Facebook and Instagram. So just search for Pello Buddy, like, follow us on all of those platforms um, for all of the latest news. And let's get on let's with get the show. on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pillow news. All right. Well, folks, it's been another tough week for Peloton in the news. Um, this week, we saw yet another Hollywood heart attack. Um, for those that watch the Showtime show Billions, fast forward because we have a little spoiler alert. Um, but on the opening show of season six, Mike Wagner, or known to avid Billions viewers as Wags, suffered a minor heart attack while riding his Peloton. Huh. Peloton, um, his, his bike plus as well. Um, he is heard to say to his colleagues, I'm not going out like Mr. Big, referencing <laughs> the fatal death of Mr. Big in the Sex in the City reboot. Yep. I like <laughs> um, how they so crossed he, over into that. <laughs> isn't that too funny? So after doing a little bit of research, apparently um, Brian Koppelman got tons of messages Um to say, because obviously they had they had taped this prior to, um, you know, and just like that being aired, um, apparently he had gotten tons of messages um, and decided to throw that extra line in. So they didn't change <laughs> anything. They just put that yeah. extra line in. But you know what? Unfortunately, to the detriment of Peloton. And, um, you know, to say that Peloton are not happy would be an understatement. Um, in a yeah. tweet responding to the episode on Sunday, Peloton, Peloton did say um, that it did not provide equipment for the show, nor did it know its brand would be used. 
Um, And they went on to say, and I quote, we get that TV shows want to include one Peloton to get people talking, but to be clear, we did not agree for our brand or IP to be used on Showtime's Billions or provide any equipment. Um, They actually were asked for further comment and a Peloton spokesman had issued a statement, John, similar to the tweet saying, you know, we get why these fictional TV shows would want to include a brand that Peloton love to talk about, that people like to talk about, excuse me, but Showtime's use of Peloton's Bike Plus and reference to the Peloton ex- instructor, and they actually referenced Tunde, um, for those Tunde, that are curious. Yeah, I was about they to say. Did, um, <laughs> was not a brand product or instructor placement, and we did not agree for our ba- brand and IP to be used on this show or provide any equipment. As referenced by the show, itself there are strong benefits of cardiovascular exercise to help people lead long happy lives um so interestingly enough cnn.com also featured the bike um and and billions in their health section in an article titled tv peloton incidents undermine the basic reality about exercise experts say So, you know, between you and me, John, you know, I think we need to look at it from a positive perspective in that, you know, big Hollywood shows use the product because it's the best out there and gets everybody talking. Um, You know, we all know that, you know, come on, we all know that exercise improves health um, because it's just silly. I mean, we didn't see the same impact, um, certainly to the stock that it did when, you know, um, with big. When Big, yeah, 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 I blanked there for a minute, but when when Mr. Big, you know, had his fatal heart attack, it didn't quite get the same, you know, the same reaction because I think people were just like, okay, come on, this is this is really bad for, you know, I feel sorry for Peloton. Um, yeah, the damage is but, already done at that point, so. Yeah, yeah, so um, kind of a But I thought, I mean, I, I saw the clip and I thought this was way, you know, it was obviously funnier because Chris Noth, uh, Mr. Big, died. Uh, right, but this was right. just, it was so funny. He's like, I'm not going out like Mr. Big. He's like, I got to ride with Toon Day. You know, I love right. that they didn't make some some fake character, Allegra Planche, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, cute. Yeah. I thought it was really funny. Yeah. And also a few episodes ago on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes. I don't think they show it, but Larry David, at one point he's Spoke like, oh, I it. pinched my balls. I pinched my balls on the Peloton, the seat. Yes. <laughs> Right, right. I did, I did, I did, I did hear that reference too. I'm not, a, I'm not yeah. a huge Curb fan, so. Um, but I did hear that I'm reference behind, too. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. It's going to get airtime because it is, you know, the, um, you know, we're not, we're not seeing them talk about Nordic Track or the Mirror on, you know, any of these shows. It's Peloton. I mean, why wouldn't you use it in your show? That's the home. Uh, you know, if, if somebody has a home bike on a movie or a show, it's a Peloton. It is. It is. I mean, we've spoken so, about it tons of times. It's been in so many, you know, just placement in tons of shows. So, um, so yeah. So I guess that made top story for this week. But um, it was it was just you know just another like dagger in in a week that you know in a time that's been a little bit um, you know um, rocky over yeah. the last you know over the last week or Pel- two. Peloton's so. PR. T- Peloton's PR team has not caught a break in a while. <laughs> Working overtime. That's for sure. That's no, for sure. No. Well, uh, in other news, so on Friday, Peloton uh, announced their Black Month history celebration, BHM, for 2022, along with a new apparel drop to go with it, uh, which is on the boutique site now live. Um, an ep- excerpt from uh, One Peloton's blog reads The Black History Month, we're celebrating the way our Black members inspire us with their dedication to themselves and their communities through theme classes and apparel collection inspired by our community, a special artist series and more. Um, And they go on to say each week they're gonna be featuring one of their standout black members who are dedicated to brightening the world around them. And then they went on to also say that new BHM classes drop February 5th, but you can dive into the special encore classes on demand starting February 1. Um, and like nice. I said, I, uh, there was a apparel collection. I didn't get anything. I, th- there was actually only one or two pieces for the men's. I think there was a pullover okay. hoodie, uh, but there's way more on the women's, uh, way more pieces on the women's side, which, which aren't a lot, but definitely more on the men's. 
Yeah. I didn't know if you had a chance to. I, you know what? I did not. I did not. I have not taken a look. Um, but it was interesting because just the day before, back on Thursday, I don't know if, if folks had seen that, um, There, an email came out saying that if you spent $150 on apparel, you would get a 30% um, uh, coupon for your next purchase. So, uh, but it was interesting that it was only for Thursday and um, then they released, you know, the apparel on, on Friday. But I guess they're trying to move, they're trying to move uh, merchandise. Um, so yeah, I, I did actually end up buying a couple things um, that I liked um, with you know with that in getting the thirty percent. So maybe maybe I'll use the thirty percent on some of the. Um, I haven't looked at the collection though, so I'll have to go. Um, I'll have to go ahead and take a look at that. I, I liked the BHM apparel drop. I think it was from nineteen or maybe two thousand twenty, where they used some 20. of the art from John Michelle Basquiat. That was cool, and I got awesome. I got one of the hoodies with a big like sort of stamp of one of his art pieces. It was very colorful with a big globe on the back of it. On the back. It was cool. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. That was cool. But All I'm, I'm right, this good. One. I'm going to wait. I'm gonna wait for the next full drop. Coming. And what comes out. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Well, moving on, it seems that we have an unhappy investor out there, Blackwell's Capital, um, just a minority one, I may add, but um, they went on and um, published an open letter calling for Peloton to explore a sale and a firing of CEO John Foley. Um, the Wall Street Journal had actually first broken um, the news uh uh, about this, um, but a full letter was published in a press release on Monday morning, this past Monday. The letter reads in part, uh, we believe the pandemic offered Peloton a tremendous and unexpected opportunity to accelerate consumer adoption of its category defining products and drive performance of the business and value for shareholders. With the stock now trading below the IPO price and down more than 80% from its high, it is clear that the company, the executives, and the board have squandered this opportunity. They claim that Peloton is in a worse off situation today than they were pre-COVID-19 pandemic. So some of the reasons that they give for the proposal for firing um, Foley are his repeated failures to effectively lead Peloton, which include pricing strategy, handling of the Tread Plus recall, as well as misleading investors that there was no need for additional funds before issuing a $1 billion in equity um, a short time later. So they also believe that Peloton would be a tremendously attractive acquisition to a number of companies such as, and we've spoken about this before, Disney, Nike, and Apple, um, and that such an acquisition would maximize the value for shareholders more than Peloton is currently able to do on its own. So, um, you know, look, they're, they're less than 5%. Um, we're not sure yeah. whether anything will truly come of it, but they were making noise and people were listening. Um, so, you know, it's an interesting time. Look, I am a, you and I, you know, we both clearly are, you know, behind Peloton all the way. I'm a Foley supporter. If it wasn't for him, the product wouldn't be here. Um, yeah, maybe some decisions, you know, were made that should have been done differently, but, um, it's a little harsh that we're looking at, you know, um, at that as an option. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a little unfair. I mean, I think Peloton took full advantage of, uh, of what they could take advantage of, especially at the height of the pandemic when, um, they saw such tremendous An growth opportunity. and obviously yeah. And, yeah and couldn't so i don't know how they didn't capitalize on that i mean everything exploded i mean they couldn't keep they couldn't keep pace obviously but who would have foreseen everything happening you know unfold the way it did right. you know in march of 2020 so i'm not really sure what he was getting at just yeah. it, it yeah. seems like he's got ulterior ulterior motives obviously but yeah, a little butthurt yeah. about his less than five percent. Um, we'll have to wait and we'll share have to wait of and Peloton see. stock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next uh, up, well, in, in better, in more positive Peloton news, uh, Peloton recently scored a, a one hundred percent in. Uh, they they were awarded the top score 
on the Human Rights Campaign's HRC uh, 2022 Corporate Equality Index, or CEI, for the work that they're doing to support the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer, or LGBTQ plus communities. Um, at the U.S. National Benchmarking uh, Tool Policies, Practices, and Benefits Relevant um, to the LGBTQ Employees, the CEI is a primary driving force for the community workplace inclusion, and it highlights um, it highlights an employer's commitment to workplace equality. So there's a um, there's a ton of different companies, like big companies, Apple, Nike, PayPal, um, that were on there that that scored really high, but Peloton, you know, earned perfect marks across the board. Nice, very nice. Well, I, I guess yes, yeah, we need some positive, right? Um, so yeah. that is definitely so that is definitely something um, great to hear. Um, who would have thought that M and M would be brought to the platform in an artist series? Uh, but I guess when boxing was added to the mix, it makes pretty good sense. Uh, this past week, we saw shadow boxing classes now being offered live and new on-demand classes coming every week. So this past Friday, January 28th, there were three live boxing classes um, that were held in the evening, all part of the new M&M artist series. Um, Rad Lopez taught the first live class at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, Selena Samuela followed with a 30-minute class um, at 7 p.m. And finally, Kendall closed it out and taught a 30-minute shadow boxing class at 9 p.m. And um, it was her birthday. So she got to do this um, on her birthday and have a ton of fun teaching it live. So that was really um, exciting to see the two collaborate together. And, you know, you kind of just picture Eminem and boxing. So it just made such sense to, uh, you know, to have the two to have the two together. Um, on Tuesday, we saw the shadow boxing class type filter show up in the cardio section of the On Demand Library. Um, and Peloton went on to drop a great promo video last week for these classes. Um, with Kendall Rad and Selena, you know, promoting Eminem and the and the live classes. Um, so a new boxing contender flash challenge plus a Peloton boxing badge um, have been dropped as well. The challenge will begin on February the second. So. Don't get too excited about starting yet, folks, because everybody knows that you don't get credit until you um, until they actually mm -hmm. do it. But at least they warned us about the dates this time. So that was good. Um, it's from February the 2nd and we'll run through the 8th. Um, and the description that Peloton gave is, think you can make it to the final bell, step in and test yourself like never before. Complete 90 minutes of boxing classes to earn your contender badge. So we know for all those hungry badge folks, um, take up boxing. I just, it just isn't doing anything for me. I, firstly, I think that Friday night to have released it was kind of a silly night. I mean, I, I don't know. People PM, are starting I, to go out. And P, yeah. Um, that's late. So I did I'm find surprised that. surprised they do a class that late. Right. I mean, 9 p.m. I mean, that was really late. So, um, and it yeah. really only accommodated, you know, the, the states, to be quite honest with you, North America. I mean, I guess, and even then, I mean, I guess some of the West mm. Coast folks could have jumped on, you know, Kendall's, um, yeah, you know, Kendall's time. class. Um, I don't know what the feedback, you know, we won't know what the feedback is yet on that. But um, yeah, just finding the time, you know, the times that they're choosing. Um, Australia, I guess, too, because it could have been early morning. It could have been early Saturday morning for the Australian folks. So that actually is is a good point. Mm. But for the European folks, those in Germany and um, the UK, it was the middle of the night. Middle so I guess night, they were yeah. taking it, they were taking it on demand. Um, but that was nice, actually, for the Australian folks because it would have been, you know, the next day. So six a.m. between six a.m. and nine a.m. Most of it's about no, actually, even later. It's about fourteen hours, fourteen to sixteen hours difference, depending on where you are in Australia. So it gave them Saturday morning an opportunity to do it. So, um, so yeah, that's um, the whole boxing I thing. Mean, but yeah, it's just not I've for yet me. to do. I've know. yet to try it, so I can't even. Me too. I can't even speak to it. It just I. I I'll just have to force myself one day if I if I finally do it. I like have the time. To try it out. I just don't get excited about. You yeah, know, me neither. About that kind of workout, but it could be fun. Yeah. I got to be open minded. Yeah. So. Yeah. I yeah. should give it a give it a 
Give it a try. Give it a shot. Yeah, so Amanda, in other news, uh, we had two classes for the new Disney movie, Encanto, that happened uh, this past Wednesday. They both went down. There was a 30-minute Encanto ride with Robin that happened on Wednesday the 26th, as well as a 30-minute Encanto yoga flow with Mariana uh, from that day as well. Uh, I did not do either of those. Uh, I'll admit I am not a fan of the movie. I did not like the music, so I steered clear. Oh, that's too <laughs> funny, though, because I actually had a, a girlfriend reach out to me to ask me if I had done it, um, and she actually said to me to to watch the movie. She loved the movie. I had, I, you know, I, I didn't do it, so it, it, it's on, it's on for it's on for today. I was going to watch it, um, and and yeah, it's on Disney Plus now. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to actually watch it, um, you know, over the weekend. So, so it's on. It's on the cards for today. So we'll have to see. And then I was going to jump on Robin's ride. So interestingly enough, you you had no desire to to do it. Interesting. All right. So I took and I saw it in the theater. So I like it had my full attention. You know, uh-huh. it wasn't like we watched it at home and I was on the couch, you know, scrolling on my phone. You know, at times. So I took Jackson yeah. to see it. Maybe the opening weekend it came out in theaters. I just thought the the music just was not good. Interesting. I just it okay. just like wasn't catchy. It wasn't memorable. It was no Moana or Coco. Like I loved though. Like Moana has the best music of recent Disney movies in my opinion. Yeah. But no, I just I could not get into the music. It just the rhythm of the the lyrics just did not flow. I just was not yeah. into it. And um, I did a Q and A over the weekend just on my Instagram stories, and someone said, what's your favorite song from Encanto? And I said, I'm not a fan of like, I just didn't people, some people were shocked and then other people yeah. were, you know, in, agree- in agreement, they didn't like it either. So. No, All just, right. Well, I'm going to watch not, it. Not I'm going to watch it on this cold, um, this cold Sunday afternoon and um, I'll report back next week and let you know what I, what I thought. And then if I like it, I'll do the ride. But um, interesting. It's good. You know, everyone has different opinions. I mean, you're entitled to that. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, just not for me. Yeah. Um, and in other uh, artist series news, we had a Joni Mitchell artist series, uh, which was just one class, music from uh, the singer-songwriter, and it was taught by Ross Rayburn. It was a, a 30-minute Joni Mitchell yoga flow. It was from, it was dropped, it was a pre-recorded drop on Monday the 24th, so that's out there in, uh, on the yoga platform. I should actually try that. That's that's good. All right, good stuff. That sounds good like stuff. good. That sounds like good chill. I don't know. It might might bring out some of Joni Mitchell, like very emoting. You know. Yeah. Sounds like very. You know, you know it's she's funny very because emotional I, in some of her music. I, my one of my pick of the weeks is actually. I don't believe it was. No, I don't think it was that. No, no, I'm not. It definitely wasn't. It definitely didn't say Joni Mitchell on there, and I didn't recognize any of the music as being that. But uh, it's actually one of my picks of the week. Okay. Is, is one of his flows, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, well, it does look though that um, Peloton are actually tr- trying something new, um, and they're doing a country-specific encore artist series, John. So they had previously dropped the Red Hot Chili Peppers artist series back in 2019. And um, it's being encored specifically to the Australian members on the platform. So um, I guess just trying to, you know, have them part of, you know, part of the platform and doing something that they can appreciate at a time that works for them. The encore classes Mm. uh, were dropped on Tuesday the 25th and were, as I said, better suited for the Australian time zone. So I believe it dropped at 7 a.m. Australian time on Tuesday morning. Um, And from what we think, I think that Peloton may be doing something similar with Coldplay, um, with that artist series too. So um, I think it is fitting that yeah. they, you know, kind of focus a little bit more on Australia because you don't hear much about them. And I'm sure that they feel like the very distant cousin, you know, on the, on the, yeah. at, the end of, at the end of the world, <laughs> on the other side yeah. of the world. So, um, so that was kind of cool to see that they had done something specific for Australia, which I liked. Cool. Well, we had um, some new scenic classes finally drop um, on last past Wednesday with Bex and Emma. And if you can recall, I know on the Pello Buddy social channels, we had posted some pics, it feels like a, at least a couple months ago, of Bex and Emma 
out on the road somewhere undisclosed filming some scenic content. That's all they really said. But, you know, they were kind of huddled up in a van in some of the pics. And I know, I know Chris Lewis was really, he was sleuthing hard trying to figure out pinpoint where, where they could be. You know, they, they didn't go anywhere eating gelato in front of a, <laughs> in front of a storefront. Um, but we did finally, it was finally revealed. It was Oregon. Um, we've got some new Oregon scenic content from both Bex and Emma, a 30 minute scenic Oregon run with Bex and then a 20 minute scenic Oregon hike, a two for one with both Bex and Emma, uh, very similar to just like the one with Jess and Ben that we got yeah. last year in Iceland, in Iceland. Um, and then also a 30 minute scenic Oregon ride with Emma and keep in mind You'll only be able to access these classes on the bike or the tread. So if you, they're not accessible on the app, you have to be a, you have to have the full membership, you know, with the, the bike or tread hardware. Yeah. Have you done it? Have you done any of them yet? Not yet. I mean, I just did. It took me a while to finally do the scenic. I remember with, you said uh, of a, ben of and a Jess. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I did that when, when my mom was here, I think over. Yeah, it was like a it was a rest day class. Maybe it was Christmas or Thanksgiving. I can't remember, but no, not yet. Yeah, yeah, I haven't either, but I definitely want to do it. My nephew actually lives out in Oregon, so um, I, I'm excited to to get to see it. It looked bloody freezing though. Ay ay ay. Oh yeah. So I'm. Sh they were Rainy, definitely all bundled overcast. up and exactly, exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I'm curious I, um, to know how those went down. I haven't heard any chatter about it though, so I'm curious to know how those you know how those turned out. They're, they're, I'm sure they were great because they both you know they're both super. So I'm sure that I want to do the hike. Workouts. I want to do the hike just to kind of see what the, the banter was back and forth between, between them. you know, like if it was true. Yeah. If it was kind of like, if it was kind of like stiff and wooden or if they were like joking around. Um, yeah. Cause, cause Ben like, and, cause ben with, and Jess ben, was amazing, right? Yeah, it was good. I mean, they just, you know, they kept it pretty light, you know, casual, but it'd be funny to see what, how it, how it goes between the exchange between Bex and Emma. Cause I, I haven't really seen them interact much, you know, like on With social media together. So I don't, I don't know what the yeah. chemistry there is, but, but I'm, a, I love, I love them both separately. Um, yeah. but it'd be interesting to see, hopefully I'd, you know, get some, some memeable moments there. Right. But we'll, right. We'll That'll be cool. I, yeah, I definitely. It. Yeah. Definitely want to try that. Definitely want to try that. Well, interestingly enough, German yoga instructor um, Nico Sarani will now be hosting one English language yoga class a month. So if any of you yogis um, would like to try someone new, she is going to have one class um, being dropped um, and her first one class a month and her first live class was dropped this past Tuesday at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Um, it was an intermediate 30 minute yoga flow and it was centered around hip and chest openers. Um, Nico had dropped an English class back in December. Um, it was part of the um, December 15 minute stocking stuffers and it was an intermediate yoga uh -huh. yoga flow. So she had, um, she had already just dropped that on demand. Um, and a big fuss really wasn't made about it. It was only when I was doing some research did I, did I see that she had done this one class before. Um, so it's nice to see that there's somebody new, um, you know, for those doing yoga and to work out with her. So I'm definitely going to go. It is intermediate though. And I'm kind of at that beginner stage, but I'll definitely try that out, um, for sure. And then we also saw the total strength two updated. Um, there are now some different warm ups and stretches that are being added each week. So we've got some new things going on there. Nice. With Andy Spear, Total Strength 2. Andy Spear, yep, yep, with Andy. And the Spearheads. Uh, well, uh, another news, Peloton has applied, recently submitted, applied for two new patents. Uh, they've also lost two patent claims. Um, so last week, the company filed for two new ones. One is for the rotating mechanism feature uh, for the Bike Plus monitor and the other relates to the cycling cleats used with the biking shoes. Um, the patent, um, with the notes I was reading from Chris Lewis, the patent goes deep into the manufacturing process of the cleats, um, but it also seems to highlight the desire to make them and the shoes easier to walk 
when not actively on the bike. Um, and we know, you know, Peloton recently released their new brand of Peloton Alto cycling shoes. Um, so it's likely that um, this could be related to some new invention with those. Um, but it's also been clear that they're not for walking around in like, um, you know, like a lot of folks have SPD shoes, you know, where it's more like the cleats embedded. So you can, you can easily walk Do around both. and not have yeah. to, yeah, uh, click, 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 clack around on the hardwood. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how those, um, Patterns you know, when they develop out. them or well, put I'll let you know. Them. I did get the new shoes, and I have to tell wow. you, they're amazing. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. They are so comfortable. You literally feel like you're riding on air. Um, mm. I am so impressed by them, I have to tell you. And I just don't know if my, you know, my other ones were so disgusting and old. And I mean, I've had them since I got my bike in 2019. Um, but yeah. actually 2018, I got my bike. Um, so these ones are so light. They're so comfortable. Um, you know, I was that typical girl trying to, you know, trying to put the cleats on, on them when I was originally, I'm like, could they not just come like prepared? <laughs> Did I have to do them myself? Um, and of course, I had to wait for Mark to come home to help me because I, I couldn't get the one, sh yeah, I couldn't get the one clipped out. Um, but yeah. I, I got to tell you, folks, I, you know, they're, they're pricey. They're not cheap, but they were worth it. I am loving riding in them. Absolutely loving riding with them. They are so easy to get on and off. They're so light. I'm sure for the bike boot, the bike boot camps, they must be fantastic because they're just so easy to flip your foot. I mean, you literally don't even have to take up, lift up the Velcro. Your foot can pretty nicely, you know, come come in and out of them. And yet, when you're on the bike, they are fantastic. So I do have to say, I am incredibly impressed with them um, from a size perspective, from a feel perspective everything about them. And I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the Nike Super Reps. Um, I do have a pair. Mm. I have them actually down in Florida. And I, I, I do not think they're comfortable. Now, some folks love them. So, um, you know, these were, these are really, really nice. I'm just bummed that you can't use the frigging referral codes because I would have definitely bought a second pair. Uh, no question. Because yeah. it's um, considered accessories, but, not apparel. Yeah, apparel. Well, but there's, one yeah. thing that I'm surprised, one thing that I'm surprised um, that I haven't seen more of, I haven't really seen any instructors wearing them. Aside from Me Jess too. Sims, I have not seen. So Cody, Tune Day this past week, uh, I did bike boot camp. I mean, I did bike boot camp with Jess as well, but Tune yeah. Day and, and Cody were just wearing, wearing the old them. school black traditional shoes. Jess has been wearing them, you know, since the day before they, they dropped. Um, but even on just straight cycling rides, I have not noticed any of the other instructors. I mean, some of them wear their own uh, non-Peloton brand shoes like City. I know um, Jan Sherman and Dennis have been wearing City cycling shoes uh, for a long time. But I'm just surprised I don't see, see more of them, you know, repping them. Very true. And I'm surprised that, yeah, I'm just surprised that they all the instructors just didn't get a pair. Interestingly enough, both Leanne yeah. and John um, saw my post, saw my, you know, so I had posted them on my, on my social and both reached out to me and asked me what I thought, you know, what I thought of them. And I'm like, okay, Leanne, you're a cycle instructor and you not, you're asking me what the shoes are like. Like, didn't you get a pair to, you know, to wear? Seriously. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was so surprised. So, oh, oh you the, know what? Yeah. Control Room just said, quite right, they're not available in the UK, which is another thing that, I mean, so many people reached out to tell me. But even, you know what, even though, even though they're not in the UK, I mean, like, you would think that the instructors would get a pair. Um, so, yeah, I would yeah. think they would get them. But then also, that would probably, the UK, I would think the UK members, the Europe members would be would frustrated. Get you know what, that is they'd, a good they'd point. They'd see them wearing them and, yeah. Just Ask like they what? don't have the, they don't, the, the UK instructors don't work out on the, the tread plus because yeah. they don't have that yeah. over there available to, <laughs> to the members. So well, that, yeah. there was another, there was another John comment because when he, when, oh. you know, I had posted and he, and he was like, God jealous. Damn it. <laughs> oh, he said he did. He, like, his message to me was, God damn it. I don't tell anybody, but I wish we had that. You know, I wish we had the plus. I know, yeah. <laughs> 
They're missing out on the shock absorbing slats. Baby. I said to him, I said, I, I, it makes me feel good that I ride on a better tread than you. Um, but yeah, I, it was definitely, he made a joke about that when he was like, he said, I'm so, I'm so, I'm super jealous. Um, so I was, I was about to say, so um, backtracking to the, the second part of the patent uh, news update. So Peloton recently lost two patents that they had uh, previously filed. They both relate to the uh, system and method for providing streaming and on-demand exercise classes. Um, mm. this, this whole review came as a result of Peloton suing Echelon back in 2019 for patent infringement. Echelon then came right back and countersued in 2020, attempting to invalidate some of the, the patents. And in 2021, the USPTO agreed to examine at least one of these patents and, um, you know, found that they didn't, they didn't hold a claim on them. So they mm. were dismissed. Yeah, John, and talking about shoes and cleats and, and, and cycling, you know, cycling shoes, et cetera, this past week, there was a, another lawsuit. This time it came out from a Long Island, New York woman um, who fractured both of her ankles while unclipping and is, and is blaming Peloton. So, you know, I feel awful for her. I can't imagine. But um, interestingly enough, we'll see where the, you know where this goes. It was back in February of 2019, um, Valentina Hadland mm. of Hampton Bay um, claims that her bike and its pedals clicking system were defective and dangerous, hence causing her to fracture both of her ankles when she unclipped. Um, she says that she has permanent damage to the bones, ligaments, and tendons of the left and right ankles and suffered shock and emotional distress. Um, so, you know, I, I feel awful for her. I don't know where, you know, where this will go, but um, look, I mean, there's no question. And, and I, I experienced it a little bit this past week uh, when I was trying, you know, when I, when I put on the new, the new cleats on my shoes and I did struggle to get, you know, to get to do it. And I was worried that I was going to hurt myself, but I didn't do it. I managed to get my foot out. And when Mark came home, he helped me and we got the shoe off and I realized that I hadn't tightened the cleats properly. And, you know, it, now they work beautifully, but, um, you know, mm. it's just, again, I guess somebody else, you know, somebody trying to see, you know, what they can do, um, to make a, you know, make something out of it. I don't know. Uh, again, I, I certainly feel, feel awful for her, but we'll see where that goes. Wow. And I guess that moves us right along, John, into instructor in the news. Um, in the news, yes. And um, yeah, so you know what was Dancing with the Stars, um, the Sex and the City spinoff, and one of the most viral ads of 2019. Um, what do they all have in common? And they represent some of the many pop culture touch points of the ambiguous fitness brand Peloton. That was um, that was the wording of NPR.org, who had a podcast come out last week titled The Ins and Outs of Peloton Culture, where they talk about the Peloton universe, including its star-making stable of instructors, complicated relationship with the wellness industry. Um, you can go ahead and head over to pelobuddy.com to get to listen to the 31 minute podcast um, and get to hear a little bit more about that. Very cool. The Peloverse. Well, some Emma news. Emma Lovewell, she was um, interviewed for Taste of Home, um, how she celebrates the New Year's, some different uh, cooking things she does to celebrate the Lunar New Year. Um, including what looks really, truly delicious is the homemade dumplings that she makes. And I know she has a couple videos on uh, YouTube, which I love, like pot stickers, dumplings. Um, one of my favorite, you know, meals that Jackie, Jack, Jack, she makes those, you know, usually once a week. Um, and then also along the lines of food, she just signed a new paid partnership with Kite Hill Foods to rep their line of original almond milk and protein yogurts. So I know, oh. um, I know Cody, you know, he's got Chobani, uh, the yogurt, uh, smoothie drink, uh, that he's been promoting lately, but, uh, Emma's now diving into yogurt. And I actually just jokingly, she just posted the other day, you know, holding up, 
you know, a, a container of, of one of the, I think it was the blueberry flavor. And I said, but is there fruit on the bottom, Emma Lovewell? And the, the, <laughs> Kite, Hill Foods, the Kite Hill Foods responded and they said, it's, it's blended in, John Pruitt. We hope you like it. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. I love that they responded. That's so cool. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see more and more of them getting these paid partnerships for sure. Um, and, and then to wrap up, um, to wrap up this section of it, um, not quite instructor in the news, but Dara Tressida, um, senior vice president and head of global marketing was amongst an elite group of black women who were attributed in diversity women magazine. Um, it's an essential business magazine and community for women professionals and executives with an initiative to support leadership and executive management development for all women of all races, cultures and backgrounds. Um, the magazine announced the second annual Elite 100, which was a tribute to black women leaders who have changed the face of corporate America. Um, so, John, some of the other big names who made the list, and Dara can be quite proud to be amongst them, um, was Cindy Kent, the COO of Everly Health, um, Joanne Jenkins, who's the C C CEO of AARP, um, Caroline Wenger, the CEO of Essence, um, and, D I and Dr. Ida um, Habatsian, the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So those are pretty big names um, for her to kind of be in their company, but um, wow. huge kudos to Dara. And and we've seen she's been working overtime <laughs> over the yeah. last uh, you know over the last year or two. So since she joined you know since she joined the um, the company, so um, huge kudos to her. Amazing, amazing achievement. We also have some uh, Pelloversaries. So happy seven year Pelloversary to DJ John Michael for seven years at Peloton and Robin Arzon celebrated eight years at Peloton. Amazing, amazing. And some birthdays. Um, we did miss Ben. Ben Aldous had a birthday last weekend. Um, so happy birthday, Ben. And what, then what we did Ben turn? What, like 20, 24? 29. 29. <laughs> still a kid. Still a kid. He is still a, he is still a kid. It's crazy. You know, I think about it and I mean, he is such a, such a mature young man for, for 29 to think about what he's accomplished. Um, yeah. You know, I certainly have family members that are around that age and there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing similar. Um, you know, he's a pretty accomplished <laughs> young man. So um, I have to say, I take my hat off to, um, to Ben. But, but interestingly enough, Leanne had, had posted, her dad had turned, um, uh, her dad is get young. This wrong, 59. 59. So, yeah, her, her parents are very young. And she was saying wow. that next year is going to be, you know, Ben's 30th and her dad's 60th. Um, so that'll be, you know, that'll be a fun, fun party around the Hainesby old, oldest family, um, for <laughs> next year. But, um, they, they had taken a quick, a quick, uh, you know, overnighter and had celebrated Ben's birthday away. So happy birthday, Ben. Um, as well as, um, uh, newbie Logan Aldridge. So Logan celebrated a birthday this past week. And gorgeous yep. Kendall, who I said earlier, Kendall, she California celebrated her Kendall. birthday this past Friday. Um, yep. And I think she did her boxing class and then hopped a plane because she was headed out west to celebrate with uh, her mama and papa. So um, I know Susie <laughs> had posted stuff. Um, Susie had posted on, on, on Insta and social. So she was looking forward to having Kendall come and celebrate birthdays. So um, happy nice. birthday. To our you know, it was, it was it was funny when I mentioned um, my Q and A on Insta. Someone, I you, you saw the the question. Someone asked, "What is the control room on the Pillow Buddy podcast?" <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and I thought I thought that was funny. Yeah, because usually it's it's always Chris Lewis and Chris Giles, our our producer, you know, in our ears, fe feeding us some info. So I, I did have out, a good shout laugh. out to the control room. And I got to tell you, you know what I was even more impressed about was clearly people really do listen because they hear us when we mm. say thank you, control room. So they're not just kind of, we're not <laughs> just like white noise in the background, John. We're not just they being really tuned listen out. to us. Yeah. But I did think it was kind of cute that that folks were concerned or, or interested as to whether you and I had met, um, you know, in real life. 
And um, as you had stated, we haven't. I feel like I feel like I have. God, <laughs> God help me. I feel like I have. <laughs> well, hopefully, towards the end of April, party. you're come on. Maybe yeah. in, towards the end of the April, when I plan to be in New York, um, maybe you'll be there for a visit. So I'll make it. You'll let me know, and we'll have. Oh, yeah. control room are giving us some little feedback here that maybe, yeah, right? Maybe homecoming will be announced. But I feel like if they're going to do homecoming like they normally do the first weekend in May, I have a feeling at this point it would be virtual yeah. again. I have to agree which, with Which you. I would rather them delay it in hopes that it could be in person with the studio open like maybe in the fall. But who knows? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll so. probably hear about it. I think Chris is telling us in the, within, the, within the next week we'll hear about what's happening with homecoming. But I get what your point is, John. I get what your point is, is that, yeah. you know, if there's any kind of hope that the studio is going to open, then delay homecoming, you know, have it, have it later. I, and I, I like, yeah, I kind of like that idea of you. I mean, it would, that would be cool to be able to do that. Yeah. But you know what, truthfully, I don't know if they can accommodate homecoming. I think they're just too many members now. I mean, how do you even begin to, you know, to... Um, Figure out just how to accommodate of, yeah, that many people. Just the amount of tickets based on the, the size of the venue for the, the yeah. you know, to locate the party. So Yeah, yeah. So it'll be it'll so be interesting. Uh, but yes, we do need to we do need to make a plan for you and I to meet in real life. Yes. Yes, you can take me out to dinner if you'd like. I'm uh, not coming take me to, to Michigan. <laughs> oh, is that where we're going? All right, let's go. I love it. That's one of my favorite restaurants in New York. Balthazar, Pastis, uh, one if by right. land, two if I see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, could right. slum, we can slum it. <laughs> we can slum it with hot dogs. Right. On, 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 we can, can we do hot dogs on the sidewalk? <laughs> and, and we can go to Sbarro's for New York Slice. Perfect. Got it. <laughs> All right. Picks, picks of the week. Should I, should I kick it off? Go for it. Absolutely. Should I do the honors? All right. Do so. The a lot of uh, people will be happy to know I got in a 45 minute full body strength, which um, look at people you. always give me a, people always give me a hard time, you know, especially instructors that I don't show up for strength because um, I try to do it and, you know, in boot camp. But Andy and Rebecca, they had rich uh, last week. They had switched their strength days. So Rebecca does usually does the Friday 45 and then Andy has the Sunday sizzle. So they sw they swapped for whatever reason, and Andy did Rebecca's forty five minute full body strength slot on Friday the twenty first. It was an intermediate class, um, but I don't get to work out live with Andy. He he just has a lot of night classes or on the weekend. Um, so I was I was super excited to do this one, and um, and it was great. It was a great workout. He did. It was just a mix of different you know melting pot of music, but. Uh, the one song way into the workout that got me all fired up was Rage Against the Machine's Bulls on Parade. So shout out to Andy, because normally I'm a slacker and I don't show up for Rebecca's Friday 45, typically. So when they announced that they were switching, I was all, yeah, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm in now for Andy, for my, for my boyfriend, Andy Spear. So that was a great one. Great, great strength workout. Um, next up, Maddie Majacamo's 20-minute uh, sorry, 30 minute pop run from Friday the 21st. And I know, I think last week I, I kind of gave, you know, I was critical of listening, you know, rides with covers, you know, covers yes. of, of various yes. songs. This yes. was all yes. pop covers. So this was all pop covers of different hit pop songs. It was still fun though. You know, it was a whole theme. So I got on board with it. Maddie, he taught a really fun class. He was where he was wearing a very revealing Adrian Williams style tank top with like max <laughs> with like maximum side boob exposure. And towards the end of the class, it sort of moved over a little bit and there was a little nipple exposure. And he went, ooh, and he goes, your subscription just went up for that. <laughs> so, so it was a fun, fun 30 minute ride. Uh, then switching over to the bike. A 30-minute club bangers with Alex from Saturday the 22nd. And if you've never done club bangers or if you just if you're not as into like the the more hardcore club music, 
that Alex plays most of the time with that that ride theme. This one was great because he totally did a, a 360, a 180 on the music, and it was all pop dance hits. Um, so it was super fun. There was Dua Lipa, Black Eyed Peas, Lil Nas X, The Weeknd, Florence and the Machine. So he totally switched it up um, with the music playlist, and it was really good. Um, and then Sam Yo. I don't think I've, I've picked a Sam ride in a, in a while, but his 45-minute 80s ride from Thursday the 27th was a lot of fun, and I think Sam's probably the only person who could open up an 80s ride with the song, with David Bowie's Magic Dance from the hit movie Labyrinth. If you remember that, um, that musical <laughs> number with David Bowie throwing up the baby with all the Jim Henson puppets dancing around in, in the movie with Jennifer Connelly from the 80s. Um, that was just so random and funny to hear that song on the Peloton platform, but it was great. I, I was, you know, I love that movie. I had a huge crush on Jennifer Connelly back then when I was a kid. Uh, but you had some Duran Duran, some Billy Joel, Phil Collins, Whitney Houston. Um, his, his 80s rides are always fun, especially when he brings in a lot of the movie soundtrack music, which he loves to do. He loves to get in the movie theme. He does, um, yes. And then rounding it out back to the tread, with uh, the Thunder Man himself, Adrian Williams, 30-minute tread EDM boot camp from Friday the 28th. Not, um, not ex this one was an excruciatingly difficult. There were some sprints there um, in the last section on the tread portion, but uh, overall, you know, great strength workout. Flies, flies by when it's a 30-minute boot camp, but uh, those, are, those are my five for the week. Awesome, that's fantastic. Yeah, well, my picks of the week. Um, all right, it's all about the tread for me this week. You knew it was going to be, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's all about the tread, and it's all about the awesome UK tread team. You, you guys by, by now know that I am, you know, completely, completely in awe of the um, UK tread team. Um, and first up, my boy John Husking is his 20-minute rock run from Monday the 24th. John, it was epic. It, and I'm just telling you, don't miss it. It's 20 minutes, okay. it flies by. Um, it was my first run, obviously, back on my tread class, and um, I couldn't have asked for I couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, it wasn't particularly hard, which worked out perfect for me um, because I, you know, it was it was my first time back, and I was anxious about you know being back on my tread. Uh, but the playlist was fire. He opened with the Stones um, and Symphony Symphony for the Devil, and then played mm. the Who's Bubba O'Reilly, um, Queen's Hammer to Fall. Uh, Nirvana's Smell Like Teen Spirit and closed with U2's Beautiful Day. Um, I mean, the playlist, you know, I've told you guys numerous times, I was never much of a rock fan until I started working out on the platform. And it's given me this whole newfound respect for, you know, some of this, you know, some of this music that I just never would have listened to if it hadn't been for working out to it. Um, so, you know, it, it was amazing. And look, it's no secret, um, you know, certainly with those of you who watch the show regularly um, or follow me on Instagram, but John is my guy. Um, you know, he's goofy, he's fun. And for me, John, he is exactly what I need to make, to motivate me to, you know, to get onto the tread. Um mm. Just what, as we said earlier, just watch his latest reel that he posted. Um, and he's very easy on the eyes. So for those of you that were not aware, he was a male model in his previous life. Um, and he is, he is gorgeous. So um, it makes running a hell of a lot easier when I know that I'm panting to him. So um, it, it, works, it works great. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> Another absolute favorite of mine is Jocelyn Thompson Rule and her 30 minute EDM run from Thursday the 27th was beyond beyond awesome. Um, you know, interesting enough, John, I didn't know most of the music um, in that in that run, but it didn't it just didn't make a, it just didn't matter. Um, you know, her tone, her instruction, and her vibe is just 
all one needs to get through, you know, a 30-minute tread. She just has a wonderful disposition and makes you, you know, she the, the verbiage that she uses, you know, she calls you babes and she gives out random shout-outs. Um, she's absolutely fantastic. So if you guys have not tried her out yet, um, you know, definitely do. And I must have mentioned it on the show before, but she, you know, she wrote a book um, which was just published and released um, uh, a couple a couple weeks ago, months ago, um, and I'm in the middle of reading it. So um, it's called Shoot. I knew I should have had it with me. Um, something about movement. How how movement something. I'll make sure that I, I get the the proper name. Um, but it gives you insight into her and who she is as a person and. It's been really amazing jumping on the um, on the tread with her, um, and then slowing mm. down. I jumped on John's twenty minutes seventies um, walk, also from Monday the twenty fourth. I did it on demand, and again the, the the playlist was was absolutely insane. He had Trexas, I love to boogie, Fleetwood Max, go your own way, the Police's Roxanne, David Bowie's Queen bitch, Elton John's Saturday Night's All Right, and he ended with the Doobie Brothers. Um, um, what a fool believes. Taking it to the streets. Um, oh. Right? I mean, say no more. It was it was the most am- amazing playlist. I mean, for, you know, 70s music is fantastic. Um, it was absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um, and then on the floor, I am going with some yoga this week. I jumped on Ross Rayburn's 30-minute yoga flow. It was um, back from Wednesday, January the 19th. Um, so I grabbed it on demand um, and it was perfect. You know, I've been, as I said earlier, I'm sticking with beginner classes right now, just as I continue to learn, you know, the process and become more familiar with, you know, the practice. But this flow was wonderful, um, just from his calming voice and his thorough explanation of what we were doing just made it so much easier for me to do and made me excited about kind of where I was going to be going um, and and my journey with yoga. So, you know, a year ago, I would never have thought that I would be a yogi. Um, And, you know, between yoga and meditation now, and I do thank Peloton because it's made it easy for me to do. I, you know, pop it either on the app or use my bike or tread, but it's just so easy to do. And um, I've, I've really, really been enjoying it. But I'm definitely going back to you know, to some of the beginner stuff. And Aditi has a wonderful beginner program that she's doing where they're just, you know, five and 10 minute um, uh, positions that she focuses on. So it's been very helpful to do that as well. So that's it as far as my picks. Um, no no bike picks this week uh, because I did stick to the tread more than the bike. God, no um, Lee no pick. I did. I did a couple rides with her, but nothing that, um, you know, I got to try different instructors. I know that I do. It's so hard to. I mean, I just I just enjoy working out with her. I really do. And um, but I know folks don't want to only hear about Leanne's rides. So, you know, my goal is to at least try, you know, at least two or three different instructors a week um, and, and incorporate it into her problem. The problem is, is that Leanne's rides are beginning of the week. So she has a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday ride, and then she's off Thursday, Friday. So with taping the show, it makes it hard, you know, to kind of have that break. I wish she had the break in the beginning of the week so I could do other instructors and then, you know, have hers towards the end of the week when we, when we tape the show. But um, that's, um, those are my picks of the weeks, folks. Well, will I see you on, uh, will you be on Jen's football ride? I will be on Jen's football ride. I am absolutely right. doing that. Um, yeah, if my legs, if my legs will um, will get me there. You know, yesterday was my century run with John, so I know the legs um, are, are struggling just a little bit. But um, it's it's a sixty minute, right? Jen's ride. Yeah, it is yeah. a sixty. I minute. think uh, so, yeah. one week. I think upcoming there's a week where it's forty five, but typically it's always sixty. I don't mind a 60. So yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. So um, I, I hope to be on there. So um, folks, right. I guess that is it from us for this week. Um, again, thank you so much for taking the time to um, tune us in, whether it be on podcast or on um, YouTube, where you get to see um, our friendly faces. 
um, we really do appreciate it. We love the fact that you tune in each week and we hope we give you what you want to hear. And um, yeah, tell your friends about us. Make sure that more and more people get to listen and hear and we hope we make it fun for you. So from me, from cold, snowy and miserable um, Maryland, um, bye for now, everybody. And for me and currently sunny Michigan, <laughs> appreciate you tuning in. And as always, we will see you on the leaderboard. Thank you for watching Pillow Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton, by the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pillow Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pillow Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pillow Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.